Hello, welcome to EPJ Parshala Spanish. My name is Nabil Ansari and I teach Spanish in the Center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American Studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. We in the paper entitled Spanish Language 1 Intermediate. In this module entitled Phone Calls and Messages, you are going to learn how to make a phone call you are also going to become familiar with phone call and chat related vocabulary and also you are going to learn to paraphrase someone's words to a third person. Interacting and communicating with others are two of the key elements of human existence. Human beings have developed multiple ways of interacting with others and each day new tools and new ways are developed. Our protagonist Andrian gets a call from Ignacio inviting him to a concert in the city. Let's see how they communicate and if there is any difference to the way we talk on phone in India. We are going to listen to, a, to an audio between Andrian and his friend. Hola Andrian, so Ignacio, ¿qué tal? Che? Muy bien, ¿y vos? ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien. Mira, nosotros vamos al concierto de Andrés Calamaro el sábado por la noche. O sea, ¿te apuntas? Claro que sí. Me apetece mucho. Será la primera vez que lo escuche en vivo. Y me encanta su música. Fenomenal. A las nueve paso por tu casa y nos vamos allá. Chao. There's a change in their plan. Andrian calls Ignacio to inform him of it, but instead, and Ignacio's mother picks up the phone. We are going to listen to the conversation between Andrian and Ignacio's mother. Sí. Está Ignacio, por favor. Claro. Ahora te lo paso. Ignacio, preguntan por ti. Hola. Hola Ignacio, soy yo, Andrean. Sí, Andrean, decime. Es que mañana por la mañana no puedo acompañarte a recoger los boletos. Tengo que ir a la universidad para recoger mis certificados. Me acaban de llamar de la secretaria. ¿Quedamos más tarde? ¿Sobre las 11? Vale, che. Pero no te distraces. Bueno, hasta ahora. Buenas noches. In the conversation uh, between Andrea and Ignacio's mother that you have just heard, the verb quedar is used for fixing a time for meeting. Don't confuse it with the ver reflexive verb quedarse, which means to stay. Let's see one example. Quedamos mañana para tomar un café. He quedado con Pepe mañana a las 3. In these sentences, quedar is used for fixing the time. And as you have learned that quedarse means to stay. Now, hasta ahora is used as a form of goodbye when you are certain to meet the person in a short while again after fixing a meeting with him or her so we can use hasta ahora when we are going to meet uh, the person in a short while and we have already fixed the timing with the person that we have already fixed the timing of the meeting apart from the telephone we communicate through so many other channels Let's see some more mediums and how communication patterns change. Which ones do you use more? They are nota, tarjeta, chat, o mensaje de texto. A ver, vamos a ver uno por uno con los ejemplos. Tuve que ir temprano a la oficina por una reunión importante no he querido despertar no he querido despertarte el desayuno está hecho cómetelo un beso eso era el primer mensaje o 
la primera forma de la comunicación. El segundo es, feliz aniversario mi amor, espero que te gusten las flores, disfruta de tu día, nos vemos pronto. Pepe, un abrazo. Eso es uh, el segundo mensaje. El tercer mensaje es, que no se te olvide pagar las facturas, ya que hoy es la fecha tope. Y el cuarto es, ¿viste la foto que te acabo de mandar? Sí, sales muy guapo, ¿dónde estás? Fuimos a las Islas Malvinas el domingo pasado y ahí la tomé. Veo que lo pasaste muy bien ahí. Sí, fue genial. Es un lugar muy bonito y tranquilo. So all the above communications using various form, formats uh, take place in an informal environment. What about the formal ones? They follow a more regular pattern than the informal communications. Take a look at some telephone conversation. El buzón de voz. Hola, ¿está usted llamando el 969-664390? No podemos atenderle en este momento. Por favor, deje su mensaje después de la señal. Gracias. So, this message was normally what uh, we receive in a voice for a voice mail. En el servicio de atención al cliente. We are going to listen to a conversation um, in, the, uh, in the Servicio de Atención al Cliente. Buenos días. Bienvenidos a Tel Talk. Mi nombre es Irene. ¿En qué puedo ayudarle? Buenos días. Tengo un problema con mi tarjeta de crédito. Es que hace un rato intenté recargar mi móvil por internet con mi tarjeta de crédito. Ustedes Realizaron el cargo a mi cuenta, pero no tengo saldo. Pedimos disculpas por el inconveniente causado. Nuestros servidores están experimentando un problema técnico. Se resolverá con la mayor celeridad posible y una vez que volvamos a la normalidad, el saldo de su teléfono se actualizará automáticamente. Disculpe las molestias. ¿Cuánto tiempo tengo que esperar? Más o menos una hora. Ok. ¿Le puedo ayudar en algo más? No, ya está. Gracias por llamar a nuestro servicio de atención al cliente. Ahora le harán un formulario de valoración del servicio. Su opinión es muy valiosa para nosotros y le, le agradeceríamos que nos ayudase a mejorar el servicio con sus sugerencias. Está bien, hasta luego. So let's have a look at some of the terms related to telephones and mobile phones. We're going to start with the verbs that we used for our telephonic conversations. They are llamar, contestar, dar un toque, descolgar, colgar, y chatear. The meanings are llamar means to call someone, contestar means to answer, dar un toque means to give a missed call, descolgar is to pick up, colgar is to hang up, and chatear means to chat. Other words are also used, for example, mandar un mensaje o mensaje de texto o SMS. Enviar un mensaje, recibir o tener un mensaje, hacer fotos, jugar a los videojuegos, descargar, subir o hacer, hacer fotos o videos. ¿Lo que significa esto? Es mandar un mensaje o mensaje de texto, means to send a text message. Enviar un mensaje, means also to send a message. Recibir un mensaje es to receive a message. Tener un mensaje es to have a message. Hacer fotos es to take photos. 
jugar a los videojuegos, es to play video games, descargar fotos, es to download fotos, o descargar videos, es to download videos, subir fotos, es to upload fotos, o videos, videos, and hacer fotos, o videos. But apart from these, there are other um, verbs that are used, for example, navegar en internet, mantener o poner el celular en silencio o en modo avión, tomar nota, dejar un recado, tener saldo, pasar a alguien y ponerse al teléfono. So, out of these um, verbs that I've just mentioned, mantener o poner en el celular en silencio means to put the phone in silence or uh, poner el celular en modo avión means to put the phone on train mode then dejar un recado means to leave a message tener saldo is to have balance navegar en internet is to surf the net now there are other all terms also which are associated with our telephonic conversations as well as uh, these terms are also related with the sending of text for example toque sonido vibración teclas pantalla pantalla táctil receptor buzón de voz y e extensión so these are some of the terms related um, with uh, the conversations now there are other terms related with conversations those are auricular batería cargador saldo apps teléfono fijo teléfono celular o móvil so teléfono fijo is fixed phone or you what you say landline phones and mobile is mobile cobertura Prefijo, tarjeta, SIM. Now let's look at some of the common expressions that can be used while talking over the phone. So we, when we talk over the phone, we there are certain fixed uh, and um, common expressions that are used by almost everyone. Al des colgar. So on picking up a phone call, what do we say or what are the expressions that we use so we say si sí, o hola o hello so these are the, some of the um, words that we say and apart from these there are other words words that we use for example diga or digame or if um, the person who picks up the call is working in some company then what he or she does uh, is uh, um, the person mentions the company name, for example, Compania, and then the name of the company, and then say Diga. Diga is like hello. Or he say um, Compania, en que puedo servirle. So after this uh, Compania, he or she mentions the name of um, the company, and he says um, en que puedo servirle, which means how may I help you. Now, uh, for, uh, for asking, para preguntar so if you're calling if you want to ask something so these are the some of the you know most uh, common questions that are being asked for example por favor está Juanito o se encuentra Juanito which means that is Juan o Juanito está um, is Juan o Juanito there or se encuentra Juanito so the same meaning so if you want to ask about someone you can simply use the verb estar or encontrarse for example if you want to ask about rodrigo then you can simply say está rodrigo or se encuentra rodrigo now if you want to talk to someone then you can use question for example podría hablar con el señor o la señora o quería hablar con el señor o la señora. So, podría hablar con el señor means 
could I speak to Mr. and then the name of the person? Or could we have that one last singular means uh, could I speak to Miss and then the name of the person you mentioned? Or you can also use the verb career in conditional, which is queria hablar con el señor, which means I wanted to speak or I want to speak um, to Mr. and Miss. Um, now, um, there are other questions which you we ask normally and um, they might be, for example, me pone con la señor López, por favor. So, this means can you connect me with uh, Mr. Um, Miss uh, Lopez, please. Same way you change the name, La Senora Lopez or El Senor Lopez, with the name of the person with whom you want to speak, and then you can ask the same question. Or the same question can be asked by saying, Me pasa con la Senora Lopez, por favor. So it also means the same thing as, Me pone con la Senora Lopez, por favor. Or you can also um, ask questions like, Me puede co Comunicar con el señor López. Same meaning, or you can say, Me puede comunicar la extensión. And then you name, uh, you mention the number, the extension number. So, Me puede comunicar con la extensión. And then you mention the number of the extension, that is the extension number. And if you want to confirm that, okay, the person speaking is the same person with whom you want to talk, then you can simply say, Es usted. El Señor Lopez or Es usted la Señora Lopez. So, which means are you Mr. Lopez or Miss Lopez? So, you change the name here and you can use this. For example, Es usted and then you name the person uh, whom uh, uh, you want to confirm whether it is the same person or not. Now, that was all about asking question and pick up, picking up the phone. Now, what about the answering part? So when the question is asked, so we also reply. For example, we can say, okay, con quien hablo o quien habla, which means with whom am I speaking or who is speaking? Or the same thing can be said by asking question, de parte de quien. De parte de quien also means who is calling. And if the person has asked for a specific person, so you can just simply say, see, sí, le paso, okay, I'm just passing the phone to him or her, or you can also you say, see, sí, ahora se pone, which means, okay, now, he or she is just going to be picking the call, or if the person is not present, then you can say, lo siento, ahora no puede ponerse, which means, sorry, he cannot come now, or he cannot, or he or she cannot, pick up the call now or you can also say lo siento en este momento no está which means i'm sorry right now he or she is not there and if you are the person um, you're the same person uh, whom the, the calling person wants to talk then you can simply say si sí, soy yo or you can say si sí, soy el mismo al habla which means okay I'm the same person or I'm uh, the same person with whom you want to talk. So after uh, we have a conversation, we also, um, so after we um, uh, reply to the questions or we have, we end the conversation, we also say goodbye to the person with whom we have just spoken. Now, that is called despedirse and para despedirse for saying goodbye we can um, use the following sentences depending on the context obviously for example we can say bueno quedamos a las ocho so if we are if we are going to meet the person as we mentioned in the beginning the quedar is also used for meeting so we say okay well we are going to meet at eight o'clock or de acuerdo le llamo más tarde which means okay I'm going to call you later. Or, que tenga un buen día, which means may you have a great day. Or, hasta ahora, chao, adios. So, all these, all these uh, forms are, are used for saying goodbye, like hasta ahora, chao, or adios. And we can also say, pues, ha sido un placer hablar con usted, or vos. 
now as we are talking about argentina so we can use the vos form that is first acidum placer hablar con vos usted means that well it has been a pleasure talking to you now in order to uh, direct the conversation towards the main motive of the call which in spanish is para dirigir la conversación hacia el verdadero motivo de la llamada so we can use the following um, sentences for example solo le llamaba para informarle o decirle which means that okay i was just calling you in order to inform you or tell you or we can also use solo le llamaba para preguntarle or solo le llamaba para saber so it depends on the on the context of what you want to say so you can use okay i call you for inform you for telling you or for asking you or for knowing something from you so you can use the le form which is uh, for um, is the usted format that is formal and you can use the te form for example solo te llamaba para informarte o decirte o preguntarte so this you can use te form which is informal depending on the context or the form which you want to use or you can also say es que hay un concierto mañana te apetece now this is when you um, tell the main motive that okay there is a concert tomorrow and do you feel like coming so te apetece venir or te apetece quedar con nosotros so you mention the purpose and then you ask the person okay do you feel like and then you um, use the verb according to the context or you can also ask directly okay what the person wants from you you can ask que puedo hacer por vos o por usted so remember this vos format is the argentinian spanish that we are using otherwise normally we say okay que puedo hacer por ti which is informal or por usted which is formal which means okay what can i do for you so, in caso de marcar un numero equivocado so for example if you have dialed a wrong number what do you say in spanish you say perdone me he equivocado which means okay i'm sorry i dialed a wrong number or you can say lo siento creo que usted se ha equivocado aquí no vive ningún javier so this is a person who picks up the call and he or, he or she can say lo siento creo que usted se ha equivocado that i'm sorry i think that you have dialed a wrong number so if the calling person um dialed the wrong number and he is speaking and he realized his mistake then he say perdone me he equivocado and if the picking up us the picking uh the person who picks up the phone and he realizes okay the guy um, the other person has dialed a wrong number then he says lo siento creo que usted se ha equivocado and then you he mentions okay that the person is not here or the person doesn't live or it's a wrong number now apart from the conversations over the phone people are more in touch with the help of chats and text messages these days as we all know we use a lot of abbreviations while communicating through these services oh well, no it all started because earlier the sms had a certain character limit now we do it so as not to type a lot there are some abbreviations that have become relatively common now let's see some of the common words and their possible abbreviations in sms language so as you can see that um, these words are written not completely but the person writing the message uh, omits some alphabets for example guapa is written as wapa ketal is simply written by a q and tl casa is in the short form written like ksa cuando is written as with um, cnd donde is written as dnd porque is written as pq or xk mañana is simply written as m and n a and tarde is written as t a r d para is written as x a por is written like x buenas buenas tardes is written as okay w n a s tardes 
unos días y otro en este bueno es días cena es written as c n a vamos es written as um, b m s apart from that for example me llamo is written as m y a m o like literal um, pronunciation of me llamo puerta is p t a punto is p t o vale is ok o simple que toque is t q and noche is n o x e now these are not exhaustive um, this is not an exa exhaustive list it depends from person to person and also it depends how the person wants to communicate the person can write full message or full words or normally the young people now omits these um, uh, many alphabets and simply write the most essential um, alphabets now when we t uh, take someone's message to pass it on to others we mostly use the indirect form of speech now we are going to listen to a conversation en la recepción de una empresa telesur diga buenos días necesito hablar con la señora gonzález de parte de quién de ignacio lópez lo siento señor lópez la señora no puede ponerse en este momento. Está en una reunión. ¿Puede usted ya llamar en una hora? Es que tengo un vuelo en media hora. ¿Puedo dejarle un recado? Sí, cómo no. Dígame. Entonces, dígale que ya hemos finalizado el contrato. Y dentro de dos días le enviaremos todos los documentos por correo electrónico. De acuerdo, señor López. Déjeme tomar la nota. Gracias. A usted. Que tenga un buen viaje. Adiós. Well, let's see um, how to form in that speech in Spanish to reproduce the message. In the format of a chat. In the format of a chat, we write like, Hola, Juana, ¿qué tal? Bien, ¿y tú? ¿Cómo andas? Fenomenal. Sabes que Arturo y yo hemos resuelto nuestras diferencias y estamos juntos otra vez. ¿De verdad? ¡Qué bien! No. En el text message, no se sé. Hola papá, ¿puedo ir a Marruecos con los compañeros de la clase? No, Roberto, no puedes. Es que no tenemos dinero para pagar tu viaje. These are like um, normal text messages that we... Uh, on the text uh, conversation that we have now we are going to listen to a conversation on the phone hola esta ana no ahora mismo ha salido al gimnasio le quieres deja dejar un recado sí por favor pregúntele si va a ir a la facultad mañana con los apuntes que le había pedido vale se lo diré bueno, Ana, ha llamado Carlos y me ha preguntado si ibas a ir a la facultad mañana con los apuntes que te había pedido. Now, after having discussed uh, all these, let's uh, listen to a text about the situation in Argentina. En Argentina hay más de 40 millones de teléfonos móviles, casi un aparat aparato por habitante. Pero paradójicamente, a medida que aumenta el uso de esta tecnología, cada vez hay más vecinos que se niegan a permitir la instalación de antenas en las cercanías de sus domicilios. Lo cierto es que si las torres no existieran, nadie tendría señal para utilizar el servicio. El ingeniero Gatti indicó que desde 1998, en coincidencia con el boom de la telefonía celular, este organismo comenzó a medir las radiaciones en áreas no ocupacionales y no encontraron puntos calientes. Es decir, no encontraron áreas que tengan radiaciones que produzcan efectos nocivos a las personas. De hecho, Katy añadió que el tejido vivo recibe la radiación de muchos otros servicios, no solo el del celular. 
Si las radiaciones fueran nocivas, argumentó, en el microcentro porteño no se podría circular debido a la gran cantidad de celulares. Los equipos de comunicaciones que utilizan las empresas y la confluencia de las señales de los medios de comunicación. Entonces, what do um, what have we learned in this module? Now in this module you have learned cómo realizar una llamada telefónica en español, verbos y términos relacionados con las llamadas telefónicas, el lenguaje de SMS y los chats y reproducir los mensajes de otros. If you want to uh, know more or if you want to do exercises and practice, uh, you can refer to the e-text. Thank you.